a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine. Well, the miner, 49er, and his daughter, Clementine. <laughs> Ten thousand cows. Sons of guns, I'm here to say, have left me dead broke today. In gambling halls, delaying, ten thousand cattle straying. In gambling halls, delaying, ten thousand cattle straying. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine. Howdy. Howdy. My name's Clanton. He's my boy, Ike. My oldest boy. Any sweet water up beyond? Yeah, two, three miles straight up the trail. Cattle look pretty scrawny. Yeah. Me and my brothers were trailing them on to California. If you ain't got them committed to no shipper, I'll take them off in your hands. Not interested. Make you a good offer. Pay in silver three dollars a head. Nope. Might raise you to five dollars, Silver. There's more than that in Mexico. They'll be a sorry looking lot by the time they get to California, son. They'll feed out when we get to grass country. Sure is rough looking country. Ain't no cow country. Mighty different where I come from. What do they call this place? Just over the rise, there, big town. Called Tombstone. Fine town. Tombstone? Yeah, I heard of it. Well, me and my brothers might ride in there tonight, get ourselves a shave, maybe. A glass of beer. Yeah, you'd enjoy yourself. Wide awake, wide open town, Tombstone. Get anything you want there. Thank you. Mighty fine child. One of these days, you're going to be as good a cook as Ma. Well, I'm learning, trying. That's what I keep telling him. Corey Sue ain't marrying him because he's so pretty. Because he's such an awful good cook. There goes that chingadera again. That sure is a mighty pretty piece of brass. Brass? That's solid silver. Twenty-five American dollars worth of solid silver. Ain't it, Brother Wyatt? Yeah, it sure is, James. Don't let him fool you. And look mighty pretty, them yellow curls of Corey Sue's. Ain't that the truth now? It's 
Mount up. We're going to town. Let's get going. $25 gold. My gunnies, you sure got a bargain. So long, James. So long, Wyatt. Morgan. So long, Virgil. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to the Bon Ton Tonsorial Parlor. Barbershop? Well, if you want to call it that. What can I do for you? Shave. Haircut? Shave. We give baths, too. Shave. I don't know how to work it so good. Only had it a week. Come all the way from Chicago. So you fellas miners? No. Prospectors? Huh? We're cattlemen. Just passing through here. Shave, please. <laughs> your duty. You and your marshals go on in there and get him out. That's Indian Charlie and they're drunk. And I ain't committing suicide on myself. Me neither. No, sir. I ain't going what in there. What kind of a town is this, anyway? Excuse me, ma'am. A man can't get a shave without getting his head blowed off. You're the marshal, ain't you? Why don't you go in and get that drunk Indian out of there? Why don't you go in and get him out yourself? They ain't paying me for it. And they ain't paying me enough, either. I... I don't blame old Luke. I wouldn't go in there either. <laughs> what kind of a town is this, anyway? Selling liquor to Indians. Oh. Put a knot on his head bigger than a turkey's egg. 
Indian, get out of town and stay out. How'd you like to stay on here, as marshal, I mean? Nope. Barber! 200 a month goes for this badge. Not interested. I'm just passing through trying to get me a relaxing little shave. We'll make it 250. Not interested. Hey, Mr. Bontime! Shave, please. Well, we sure want to thank you, Mr. Earp. Wyatt Earp. What? You're not by any chance the marshal from Dodge City. Ex-marshal. Is that Marshall job still open? It sure is. I'll take it. It's yours. Providing my brothers are my deputies. When do you want to start? Now. Who runs the gambling around here? Doc Holliday, mostly. Who runs the cattle? The Clantons. Old man Clanton and his four sons. Good evening, Mr. Clanton. Good evening. The fellow with a trail herd, remember? Oh, sure, I remember you. He was right. I didn't get very far with him. It was Russell this evening. And so? Well, that's too bad. For California, huh? No, I figured I'm sticking around a while. Got myself a job. Cow punching? Marshal. Marshal him? In Tombstone? <laughs> well, good luck to you, Mr. Earp. Wyatt Earp. Did you, James? I wrote to Pa and Corey Sue. They're gonna be all busted up over it. Corey Sue's young, but Pa guess he'll never get over it. I'll be coming out to see you regular, James. Morgan Verge. I'm going to be around here for a while. Can't tell. Maybe when we leave this country, young kids like you will be able to 
grow up and live safe. What'd you find out? I followed a trail from the Clanton country to the river. They're moving cattle, all right. Well, I'll get yourself some sleep. There's coffee on the stove, some beans. Morg's riding shotgun to Tucson. Say, maybe I better ask around the banks while I'm down there, huh? Nah, they're too smart for that. Sons of guns, I'm here to say, have left me dead broke, dead broke today. In gambling halls, delay ten thousand cattle stray. Hey, Mac, I, I hear Doc's coming back tonight. Maybe he is, maybe he ain't. I ain't heard. Well, um, do you know where he's been? Tucson. Over the border, who knows where Doc goes? Do a little figuring here. What would I do if I was in your boots, Mr. Gambler? You drew three cards and I stood pat, and yet you raised me. Now the question is, what should I do? Yeah, mighty interesting game, Poker. Game a chance. <laughs> Listen, this I admire poker, but you're increasing the odds. I catch you doing that again, I'll run you back to the Apache Listen, reservation Mr. where you Ten belong. Star Marshal, this is Doc Holliday's town, and when he comes back.
sorry, Chance, but I don't like eight-handed poker games. Oh, Mr. Marshall, you don't think that I have? Oh, no. Well, where were we? He just raised you, Marshal. Oh, yeah. Well, soon as you know I got three of a kind, I guess I'll... Doc. Have a good trip. Doc Holliday. Nice looking fella. Doc, don't let's have any trouble. you to get out of town and stay out. Oh, Doc, I'll cut you in on the game. I told you to get out of town. Check me in, will you? That door's for ladies and gentlemen. Well, you can catch me in. It's getting late. I'll see you all later. Town for a fella to have a quiet game of poker in. for being here. But I heard a lot about you too, Doc. You left your mark around in Deadwood, Denver and places. Fact, a man could almost follow your trail going from graveyard to graveyard. There's one here too. The biggest graveyard west of the Rockies. Marshalls and I usually get along much better when uh, we understand that right away. Get your meaning, Doc. Good. Have a drink? Thanks, believe I will. Mac, a glass of champagne for the marshal. Make it whiskey. You're my guest, marshal. Champagne. Champagne it is, Mac. Staying here long? A while. Until you catch the rustlers that killed your brother? It's a general idea. What's a specific idea? I don't follow you quite. You haven't taken it into your head to deliver us from all evil. I haven't thought of it quite like that, but ain't a bad idea. It's what I'm getting paid for. Let's get down to cases, Marshal. I, for instance, how would you handle me if I took an ocean to break the law? You already have. For example? Run that tin horn out of town. That's none of your business. I see we're in opposite camps, Marshal. Draw. Can't. 
We can take care of that easily enough. Mac. Brother Morb's gun. Penguin, that's Morg. The other one, that good-looking fella, that's my brother, Verge. It's Doc Holliday, fellas. Hiya, Doc. Howdy. Howdy. Have a drink. Don't mind if I do, Doc. Join us, Mac. Yes, sir. Thanks. Gentlemen. Your help. Your help. Good man, let me have service, or I'll take my patronage elsewhere. Your foot, sir. Champagne. The actor in tonight's show. Shakespeare and Tombstone. Coming right up, Mr. Shakespeare. A long time since I heard Shakespeare. How would you like to join me tonight, Marshal? Yeah, fine. Never see guests of the theater. There won't be any show. Mac, cash in for me, will you? Yes, sir. Dad, take Mr. Thorndike over to the birdcage. Birdcage? You're incarcerating me in the birdcage, sir. That's the name of the theater. The theater? The show? Good heavens! The show must go on. Lead on. Drinks on the house. Or him. He ain't no friend of mine. What she's trying to say, Doc, is that uh, we've met before. Sort of found ourselves together in an eight handed poker game. already have enough trouble. That eminent actor, that sterling tragedian, Mr. Granville oh. has completely disappeared. Mr. Portham, this year this has happened, Marshal. Bird imitators. 
Hood imitators, that's all we get. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. I can well, explain what that. What are you fixing to do about it? Oh, Marshal, be reasonable. All we want to do is to ride him around town a couple of times on the rail. <laughs> Sounds reasonable enough to me. I got a better idea. Just give me 15 minutes and I think I can find this Mr. Uh, I'll bring you back here. Now sit down and take your seats again. Have another beer. Look, Yorick, can't you give us nothing but them poems? I have a very large repertoire, sir. Great. All right, Yorick, go ahead. Shoot. Minstrel, pray help me. Wait, I want to hear this. Thank you. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartaches and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep. A chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? That's enough. That's enough. You don't know nothing but them poems. You can't sing. Maybe you can dance. Leave him alone. Please go on, Mr. Thorndike. Thank you, gentlemen. Must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy take, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? Life. Please help me, sir. But that's the dread of something after death. Would you carry on? I'm afraid it's been so long. The undiscovered country, from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Shakespeare was not meant for taverns, nor for tavern louts. Yorick stays here. My apologies, Marshal. I can friend have had a little whiskey. Sure, I figure they're just having themselves some fun. Come on, Mr. Thorndike, I'll take you to the theater. Stop! Stop! 
Southpaw! Stop! Stop! When you pull a gun, kill a man. Yes, Paul. Breakfast. All out for breakfast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right the floor, How are things in Deadwood, Mr. Gambler? All right, I guess. Brother with you? No. Did you sell some flapjacks? Stage is leaving in 30 minutes. See you around. Help you, ma'am? Oh, Dad's usually here to take care of the... Is that your duffel up there? Yes. Alice, just give me a stack of buckwheat cakes and plenty of molasses and a steak, blood rare, a couple of hunks of bacon if you got some, and a big pot of... Dr. John Holliday. You mean Doc Holliday? Well, I imagine so. Oh, Doc Holliday. Why, he rode out of town about 3 o'clock this morning, heading south. I don't know when he'll be back, man. He'll most likely be back supper time. Maybe you'd like to have some breakfast, freshen up a bit. Oh, I would like some coffee. Have you got a room for Miss... Carter. Clementine Carter. Josephine, I can't get a couple of buckets of hot water. So she can take a bath. Yes, much. It's Doc's room. You're right across the hall from it. John's room? John with a mustache. He is a good surgeon, isn't he? I wouldn't know, ma'am. picture of you. All right, folks. All the children now. The town of Tombstone is most grateful to you for a wonderful performance. Mr. Mayor, I'm most touched by your tribute. Have one of my cards, Thank Mr. Thank you Thorndike. very much, sir. Sorry, you're leaving, Mr. Thorndike. Here's your bill. The bill. Thank you. Great 
souls by instinct to each other turn, demand allegiance and in friendship burn. Good night, sweet prince. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> Dr. John Holliday. Who? Dr. John Holliday. Oh. Well, uh, I'll see if I can find him, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to meet a friend of mine, Wyatt Earp, Miss Clementine Carter. We've met, John. Good evening, Mr. Earp. Howdy, ma'am. I'll see you both later. Let's see. What are you up to? <laughs> Wonderful to see you again, John. You are pleased that I came. Coming has made you unhappy. It was ill-advised. Any less ill-advised than where you left Boston? How'd you know I was here? I didn't. Finding you hasn't been easy. From a cow camp to cow camp, from one mining town to another. <laughs> well, I should think that if nothing more, you'd be at least flattered to have a girl chase you. Look, Clem, you've got to get out of here. But I'm not. This is no place for your kind of person. What kind of a person am I, John? Please go back home, Clem. Back where you belong. Forget the... <laughs> John frequently. Women was there. Each time is worse. You're ill, John. So that's the reason you left. That has nothing to do with it. Foolish, foolish, John. As if that would have mattered. I tell you, Clem, the condition of my health has nothing to do with it. I don't believe you, John. Then I'll give you the truth. The man you once knew is no more. There's not a vestige of him left, nothing. Come, I'll take you back to the hotel. Please, John. You can't send me away like this. You can't run away from me any more than you can run away from yourself. Now I know why you don't care whether you live or die. Why you've tried to get yourself killed. Oh, I've heard all about you, John, and you're wrong. So wrong. You've no right to destroy yourself. I have a world of friends back home who love you, John. And I love you. There's a stage leaving in the morning for the East. Take it. If you don't, I'm moving on. Very well, John. I'll go.
Dr. John Holliday. Where I'm standing, Earth, that tin badge you're wearing doesn't give you the right to stick your nose in my personal affairs. What's eating you, Doc? Why didn't you tell me Miss Coyer's here? Well, she told you why. She wanted to surprise you. Give me a clean glass, Mac. You're not going to start with drinking whiskey again, are you? Give me a glass, Mac. I'll pour it. From under a broad sombrero, the first kiss is always the sweetest. From under a broad sombrero. Why don't you go away? all your stupid little songs and leave me alone. See if I can get Doc to bed. Oh, why don't you finish your supper? Have a drink. No thanks, Doc. I said have a drink. No thanks. I just finished supper. Look, Doc. I ain't trying to poke my nose into your personal affairs. But from where I stand, the man will have to go a long ways before he finds a finer girl than that Miss Carter. Or a prettier one, for that matter. Ain't a man west of Mississippi wouldn't give his shirt to... Marshal, you've said enough. Just you say, Doc. And this isn't any of your business, either. that up and you'll be out of business. You've just given me a brilliant idea, Marshal. It's time I tempted fate. Let's see. Who's in here I don't particularly like? That's a sucker game, Doc. There's probably 50 fellas around town just waiting to see you get liquored up so they can fill you full of holes. Fill themselves up a great reputation. The man that killed Doc Holliday. Mac. Give me a hand, let's get him to bed. No, 
Chair gets in next week from Kansas City, Kansas. Fine, fine. Sweet smelling stuff, Miss Dirk. Sweet smelling stuff. Good breakfast? Yeah, I've stored away a whole skillet full of ham and eggs. You're good. Very sort of figured on getting a buckboard and maybe going up and see James. Good idea. Thinking I might ride out there later this afternoon myself. in the territory, I'd swear we were back home on a Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, with Ma scrubbing our necks to go to camp meeting. By golly, I'll bet that's what it is, camp meeting. Could be. You know, I swear I can almost smell the honeysuckle blossoms. That's me. Barbara. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You gentlemen coming to church this morning, I hope. Well, we're having a first social gathering. Raise enough money to finish the church. See what I tell you, it's a camp meeting. Camp meeting? No such a dad blast of thing. Oh. Regular church. Oh, is that what they're building? I was wondering what that fresh cut lumber was for. Yes, sir. Roof will be on next week. Yes, I was hoping that you single men would come. It'd be awful nice for the dancing. Yeah. This year's single. <laughs> That classic good dancer, too. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am, but my brother's got sort of a job of work to do, and I ought to stay around the place. Well, keeping the peace is no whit less important. Get going, sis. Good day. Good day. Good day. All right. You know, there's probably a lot of nice people around here. We just ain't met them. Come on, Morg, let's get started. I'd kind of like to get back for that dancing. You butted him last night. He'll twist that tin badge around your heart. I'm Chihuahua. I'm Doc Holliday's girl. Just wanted to make sure you were packing. Stop stabbing doors. People billion dropping pictures on a floor. There's I'm no rest. Sorry, darling, you're not mad, are you? Sure not. What right have I got to be mad with anyone or anything? She's packing, Doc. She's leaving town. Happy, aren't you? I ain't sad. Could be a thing. Huh?
Chihuahua, I'm going into Mexico for a week or ten days. And while Take I'm going, me I want you. Dark, will you? Why not? Why not? Tell Francois to fix a bridal breakfast. Flowers, champagne. You get your prettiest dress. Tell him the queen is dead. Long live the queen. Oh, oh Doc. Miss Carter. Good morning, Mr. Earp. You leaving? Yes, I'm leaving for the east on the stage. Eastbound stage don't leave till noon on Sunday. Mighty short visit. Some people think I've overstayed my visit already. I don't know, ma'am, but if you ask me, I, I think you're giving up too easy. Marshal, if you ask me, I... I don't think you know too much about a woman's pride. Oh, ma'am, maybe I don't. Girls, don't forget to be back in time for Sunday dinner now. Oh, I'm sorry about your bags, Miss Carter. I didn't get a chance to get them down. The girls put, it, put together a pack of lunch. Oh, oh that's oh. my soul. He did it. Good morning, miss. Good morning, Marshal. John Simpson said he'd have a church, and he has. Church bells and tombstones. I believe that's the first church bell I've heard in months. <laughs> yes. Well. I love your town in the morning, Marshal. The air is so clean and clear. The scent of the desert flowers. That's me. Barbara. Marshal, may I go with you? You are going to the services, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I'd admire to take you. Thank you. Now, folks, I hereby declare the first church of Tombstone, which ain't got no name yet, nor no preacher either, officially dedicated. Now, I don't pretend to be no preacher, but I've read the good book from cover to cover and back again, and I never found one word again dancing. So we'll commence by having a dead blasted good dance. <laughs> 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 
Dinner party, Marshal. It's all right, Doc. Sit down and join us. Look, Clem, I told you last night to leave Tombstone and go back east. I also told you if you didn't leave, I would. Hey, Doc. Just a minute, Doc. That's the second time in three days you've been trying to run somebody out of town. That's my business. That's what I'm getting paid for. Miss Carter or any other decent citizen can stay here just as long as they want to. We're through talking, Marshal. My advice to you is start carrying your gun. That's good advice. going to Mexico and take me with him. He was going to marry me. Well, you're leaving too.
What's the matter, Miss Carter? Well, I think it's just a common case of hysteria, Marshal. Oh, it is, is it? What are you doing here? It's none of your business. Why don't you behave yourself? Get out. Go on back. I'm not mom. getting out till she leaves town. Barney, you want me to take you over my knee and... You take your her. hands off me. Leave me alone. What do you know about it anyway? What do you know about Doc and me? We was going to Mexico and get married. Yes, he was going to marry me. So this Miss Milk face comes pussy me along and... Where'd you get that? Don't give it to me. Where do you think I got it? You ain't lying. Why should I lie about it? He gives me everything I've got. I've got a whole room full of stuff down there. Keep your door locked, Miss Carter. Keep this wildcat stays in the room, will you? And tell Verge to stick around. What's up? Doc Holliday. Where's Holliday? He came in about a half an hour ago. Got his saddlebags and a sack of gold out of the safe and left in a hurry. Were you looking for Doc? I am. Well, he left on the bullion stage riding shotgun. Left town? For Tucson. Get my bay mare and hair up to jail, will you, Jess? Sure. You, whiskey for my boys. How long ago did the stage come through here? Well, about 15, 20 minutes ago. Doc Holliday on it? Yes, he was, and he was sure going to town. I need a couple of fresh horses. Cut me out two stout ones. Under the what a... One that'll lead well. Oh, right, Marshal. That bay looks good.
through. I told you I'm through talking, Marshal. You're coming back to Tombstone with me, Doc. Sorry. I'm not going back. Well, in that case, I'll be taking you back. Go for your gun, Marshal. You call it, Doc. Why did you tell the marshal I gave you this jewelry? Well, you did, Doc. You give it to me. I never saw this piece of junk before in my life. Who gave it to you? Well, you can't remember everything you give me, Doc. Sure you did. Don't you remember? When? Well, look, uh, two or three days ago. I don't know. What difference does it make? That being the case, Doc, I charge you with the murder of my brother, James Earp. Doc, he's fooling me. I ain't fooling. It was stolen from him the night he was shot in the back. Now, do you still insist I gave it to you? No, no, of course not. And who did? I ain't gonna be a squealer, Doc. Let's go, Doc. You told me to go away and scrawl my silly little song somewhere else. So I came up here and had a good cry. There was a knock at the door and I thought it was you. I opened the door and It was Billy Clanton. Billy Clanton, go get him, Verge. Quiet. Well, you'd better send a white shoot to an army doctor. They have to operate immediately. That'll take five or six hours, Doc. You're a doctor, ain't you? Doctor. Morgue over at the mansion house. Get Miss Carter. She's a nurse. Tell her to stop by Doc's room and get that doctor's bag. Right. Mac, yes. you and Buck go down and clean up the saloon. Put a couple of poker tables together and put some lights around them. Sure. Doc, you're going to operate. Rub our feet, Percy. Rub our feet. Hurry, Doc. Right, 
sorry, Doc. Joe mad? No, honey. Look, I haven't got anything to put you to sleep. So this is going to hurt like blazes. Yell, scream, holler, anything you like. Tell me when you're ready. for your brother, Billy Clanton. He's right in there, Mr. Earp. My boy, Billy. Shot down in the streets of Tombstone. Bet it had to end this way, Mr. Clinton. Get mounted. Doc, I, I mean doctor, I'm going to take her to my house and take good care of her. Can't I do that, Marshal? Sure.
I'm awfully proud of you, John. Thanks, Clem. She was a brave girl. Well, the Clantons are at the O.K. Corral, all right. They're barricaded down there, all four of them. Marshal, we want you to count us in on this. We ain't fighting men, but we'd sure like to help you out. Thanks, Deacon, but this is strictly a family affair. What's the matter? They too yell to come out and fight? They'll come. on that keg, son. How's Chihuahua? She's dead. Dr. John Holliday. We start. Son of. Son up, Bike. Finn. Sam. Sun's coming up, Marshal. straight?
Here they come. Doc Holliday's with him. Wait till they get closer, you fools. Finn, cover your brother. Mr. Clanton. Let's talk a while. Ike! Well, now. You go right ahead and talk. I got a warrant here for you and your son. Charging the murder of James and Virgil Earp. There's also a charge of cattle rustling. I'm giving you a chance to submit to proper authority. Will you come on right in here, Marshal, and serve your warrant? Which one of you killed James? I did. And the other one, too. I'm gonna kill you.
Throw your gun down and come on out, old man. My boys. Ike, Sam, Finn, Billy. That's it. I ain't gonna kill you. I hope you live a hundred years. Feel just a little what my pa's gonna feel. Now, get out of town. Start wandering. Bye, ma'am. Mighty nice to have made your acquaintance. Get along, horses. There's so many things I wanted to say, and now nothing seems appropriate. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I know. The mayor says you might be staying here a while, maybe helping get a school started. Yes, I'm the new school mom. Oh, that's mighty nice, ma'am. Me and Morg are going out to see Pa, tell him what happened. I might come east again, get some cattle. Maybe stop by here again. Stop by the schoolhouse? Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Bye, ma'am. Goodbye. Ma'am, I sure like that name. Clementine. Oh. 